Therefore, there are two schemes for recovering the rotor wasting of rotor power. That is nothing but the Scherbius drive and also Cramer drive. If you observe the Scherbius drive, in this scheme, variable frequency of rotor power is converted to DC by a diode bridge rectifier and then an inverter converts it back to AC. That is, what amount of three phase AC supply lines has been connected towards the synchronous motor, so slipping induction motor with a frequency of 50 or 60 hz and is fed back towards the supply lines. Thus, the slip power is fed back to the source instead of wasting it into the rotor resistance, thereby increasing the efficiency of the drive. These are the most efficient applications or the advantages towards the system. And what about the Cramer drive? If you consider in this scheme of in this scheme, the variable frequency as same rotor power is converted to DC by a diode bridge rectifier. The DC power is fed to the DC motor, which is mechanically coupled to the machine. Previously, in the Scherbius drive, the amount of power is converted to DC by a diode bridge rectifier, and then an inverter converts it back to AC. That is nothing but amount of supply, or amount of power that is coming from the rotor circuit is converted to DC and again it is inverted to AC and then fed back towards the three phase AC supply mains. But in Cramer drive, the DC power is to be fed to the DC motor which is mechanically coupled with induction where again a DC motor is adding, is connecting towards the induction motor that is a mechanically coupled to the induction motor. Thus, the torque supplied by to the load is the sum of the torque produced by induction motor and DC motor. Therefore, this is another type of the scheme that it can be slip power is utilizable. Here, in brief, if you observe the Scherbius drive system, the Scherbius system classifies a conventional Scherbius system and a static Scherbius system. Conventional Scherbius system, if you observe, in this system, the recovery scheme is done by feedback path. The output of the three phase induction motor is connected to the DC motor by coupling them to the mechanical power into DC motor. Is converted to into again electrical power and fed it to an induction generator. This is a huge system. It is not a simple system, that is a conventional method. Different types of motors which are used, and again, amount of power that is getting from the system is fed back towards the Three phase AC supply. If you observe the log diagram, this is nothing but the three phase AC supply mains. A three phase AP AC supply mains is connected towards the stator of a slipping induction motor that is an L1. And rotor circuit, if you observe, a rotor is an L2, which is connected three phase distributed winding is the same of the stator. The three Wise or three terminals connected from rotor circuit towards the slip rings that is nothing but a rotary converter we are using here. That is nothing but a rotary converter. Amount of availability of the AC supply is converting into DC. And here the DC is fed back towards the DC motor. And again, the DC motor is connected towards the induction generator. By while you adding an induction generator that generates amount of supply that which is equals to the three phase AC supply system. That is, if you consider it's a 440 volts of a 50 hertz supply frequency, as the same, it can be generated at the same value of the three phase AC supply mains, whichever is connected towards the stator of the slipping induction. Therefore, by using different types of motors, this is a huge of huge amount of 
cost is also applicable by using of this conventional shear gas systems. For the static shear gas drive system, these type of systems we directly use a diode bridge rectifier. That is, in place of a rotary converter, we are using a diode bridge rectifier, and and also a thyristor bridge rate inverter is also we are using. And these type of drives can be applicable for subsynchronous applications, speed applications. That's why we call it, call it as a subsynchronous cascade type. When an induction motor is operating at slip frequency, the rotor slip power is rectified by the diode bridge rectifier. The output of rectifier is fed to inverter three phase bridge again. The output is fed back towards supply lines with the help of a transformer. In previous conventional CBS drive system, we are used DC motors and also induction generator. But here in a static CBS drive system, any rotary equipments or rotary machining parts, converting parts are not using here. We are using the static equipment that is diode bridge rectifier and also thyristor bridge inverter circuit. By using of these type of a systems, we are fed back the supply supply voltage towards the three phase AC supply lines using of a transformer. This diagram shows the static CBS system. That is the three phase AC supply lines which are connected towards the stator of the slipping induction motor and again. Three phase induction motor rotor is connected towards the slip rings. That is, I1 is determined the stator current and I2 is determined the rotor currents, which are connected towards the diode bridge rectifier. Here, the diode bridge rectifier is connected towards the inductor. From the inductor, it is connected towards the inverter circuit. That is, from the diode bridge rectifier, amount of Output voltage or rectified voltage, which we are getting is a VD1 voltage. It is giving towards the inverter circuit as an input that is considered as a V1. Filtered output of a DC is fedding, fed back towards the inverter. And the inverter operates, operates and it is converting into AC. What about amount of uh, availability of the DC input is converting into or inverting into AC supply. And here we are using a transformer. The amount of voltage is to be stepping up towards the required voltage towards the three phase AC supply lines. And if you consider the static cram and drain, in this method, the rotary slip power is converted into DC by a diode bridge circuit. Here, the DC power is fed to the DC motor, which is mechanically coupled with the induction motor. By varying the DC motor field, we can achieve the speed values while varying the field control methods. By using the field control methods, we achieve the speed controls more than the rated values. That's why. The speed of the DC motor can be increased. Therefore, amount of speed can be the amount of speed can be achieved by using of the field control methods while weighing the field regulator. Here, the motor is connected or coupled mechanically with respect to the slipping induction. Therefore, by using of the static primal drives, static primal drives, the torque is to be total load torque is to be shared by the slipping induction motor and also the DC motor. If you observe the modified static primal drive, that is, the static primal drive system is modified by placing a commutatorless DC motor instead of DC machine, of conventional DC motor. The DC motor consists of synchronous motor fed by load commutator inverter 
द स्पीड इज कंट्रोल्ड बाई ए फील्ड करंट और ए फील्ड रेगुलर एंड दिस इज नथिंग बट द मॉडिफाइड स्टैटिक प्राइमर ड्राइव द थ्री फेज ए सी सप्लाई अगेन इट शुड बी सेम कनेक्टेड टू वर्ड द स्लिपरिंग इंडक्शन मोटर दट इज द मेकेनिकल पॉवर सप्लाइड बाय द स्लिपरिंग इंडक्शन मोटर द पी एम एंड ऑल्सो इन प्लेस ऑफ द डी सी मोटर वी आर यूजिंग ए सिंक्रोनस मोटर हियर amount of slip power that is recovered from the rotor circuit is connected to the converter circuit and is inverted using of a bridge circuit of inverter and is connected to wards synchronous previously we are using the dc motor to share the load and also the slip ring induction motor is also sharing the loads the total load torque can be shared by slip ring induction motor torque and also the dc motor torque but now if you consider a synchronous motor we are using by using of the synchronous motor the directly ac is to be connecting towards a three phase distributed winding of the stator and here we are getting the recovered power that is nothing but the amount of slip power that is wasted is converted and it is recovering and it is the given feedback towards the load circuit therefore the total load torque can be shared by these two motors that is a slip ring induction motor and also the synchronous induction synchronous motor thank you and next onwards we discussed about the synchronous motor drives